What's up, guys and gals? This is a damn nerd, and welcome back to Just a Damn Nerd. Now, if you're a returning viewer, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you. If you're here for the first time, check out the channel. I hope you enjoy some of the content. We do Florida State football videos, and we do video games. And today we're doing video games. So today we're talking about the reasons and potential repercussions if Microsoft actually stops making consoles or goes fully multi-platform. I have seen some mention now that Microsoft is not going to stop making consoles. However, that news came out after I started researching and writing this video. I think the repercussions of Microsoft going fully multi-platform are pretty much just as bad. So in this video, we're going to touch on some of the reasons why Microsoft might go multi-platform or stop making game consoles. Now, I would be very surprised if Microsoft stopped making video game consoles. I don't see the advantage of it for them. But there's a lot of smoke surrounding this idea and this rumor. And as the old adage goes, where there's smoke, there's probably fire. So there probably is something to this rumor, even if it's not quite as extreme as it's being made out to be. So first we have to frame this. In the past few years, Microsoft has spent nearly one hundred billion dollars. One billion, gajillion, fifillion, million. On acquiring new video game studios. They've purchased studios like Bethesda, Activision Blizzard, and Obsidian Entertainment, among several others. Now, we all thought this was to repair the damage done to Microsoft's first party studios by that dumbass Don Matrick. Games and entertainment, the functionality of the box, some of the advantages that you get of having a box that is designed right. to use uh, an online state. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, to me, is a future-proof choice, right. and I think people could have arguably gone the other way if we didn't do it, and fortunately we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Right. So stick with 360, that's your message if you don't. Well, and his decision that Microsoft didn't need exclusive titles to sell a game console. In the years after Don Matrick was encouraged to leave, it started to become clear that Microsoft needed to do something to repair their first party and repair their first party's image with gamers. Because Don Magic had let Bungie go and had publicly said that Microsoft didn't so much need exclusives because people would just buy an Xbox because it's an Xbox. Which I know you're thinking is probably the most idiotic thing you've ever heard. If the Xbox has no reason for you to own one, why not just buy a PlayStation or a PC? Well, I think Don Magic might have actually been mentally handicapped. The answer seemed to be the same answer it always seems to be for Microsoft, which is to buy everything. To save the Xbox. Or so we all thought. Microsoft would start by buying ZeniMax. Now, they bought several smaller studios first, but ZeniMax was the first big one. And for that, they got Arcane, id Software, Machine Games, and the real reason they wanted ZeniMax, Bethesda. They would go on to acquire Activision Blizzard after a very long fight with Sony and the federal government, eventually being approved to acquire Activision Blizzard, which I think they take ownership of this month, among many other smaller studios, as they bought up as many indie studios as they could get their hands on. This looked like a giant win for Xbox fans. Now the Xbox fans could poke fun at PlayStation 5 owners. They could say, now you can't have COD or Elder Scrolls or Doom. <laughs> I guess you should have bought an Xbox. But the FTC, oh, was it FTC? I don't remember. The federal government fucked that up by making Microsoft put COD on PlayStation for 10 years. There still was a lot of exclusive games on Xbox, in theory, that Sony wouldn't get. For example, Doom 3, or whatever you want to call the sequel to Doom Eternal, would likely be an Xbox exclusive, arcane games, and so many others, the Xbox fans could still pound their chest over. But there was another problem hiding, out of sight and out of mind. And that problem initially seemed like an advantage for Microsoft, and that was Game Pass. It started to become obvious, almost immediately, that Microsoft was far more concerned with Game Pass than Xbox. So Game Pass is the first reason this could be true. Microsoft would love, love, nothing more than getting Game Pass on PlayStation, and not just on PlayStation. Microsoft would love to get Game Pass on TVs, 
with the Game Pass streaming app. This would most likely mean more people on Game Pass. And it appears, at least on the outside looking in, that Microsoft is more concerned with getting people on Game Pass than they are with the future of Xbox. Now if you remember, at the start of the generation, Microsoft said they thought the future of gaming was streaming and software, not expensive hardware like Xbox. I think this is wrong thinking, personally, because the idea of streaming games, in my humble opinion, seems more than a little unrealistic. All you have to do is think about the massive amount of local power it takes to run games on Ultra. Plus, gamers are very obsessed with low latency because it makes the game feel a lot better when you play it. It's very difficult and it may be impossible to get the same low latency over a network you can get locally. And that's why I think the idea of streaming games is at best a pipe dream and unrealistic. I also think it's very unlikely to ever truly succeed. Now Game Pass is just one reason why this rumor of Microsoft stopping exclusivity or leaving the console market altogether could be true. Maybe the biggest reason is because like all companies, Microsoft is beholden to its shareholders and its board of directors. It seems very likely of what they got for that hundred billion dollars is likely to come up at the investor meeting. Now they can't use the games they've launched under the Xbox brand in the last few years to justify this expense because the vast majority of the games Microsoft has launched lately, well to put it nicely, have vastly underperformed and underwhelmed. Titles like Halo Infinite. Halo was once Microsoft's biggest Xbox IP and you may still argue the most important game for brand recognition because Halo is so synonymous with Xbox. And what did we get? Well. The game's advertising felt very bait and switch again. Again, 343 tried to pull the same trick twice. They used the success of Halo Wars 2 to market Infinite. If you were one of the people who really liked Halo Wars 2, which I was, you would have been, or we would have been, we were, very excited to learn that Atriox was going to be the main antagonist in Halo Infinite. My name is Atriox, and I... I'm the last face you will ever see. Even the opening cutscene, which 343 released before the game came out, by the way, Atriox manhandled the Master Chief and threw his ass into space. So imagine our surprise and our disappointment and our feeling of being lied to when it turned out Atriox wasn't even in the fucking game. It's like, what the fuck? They did it again. They pulled this shit with Halo 5 where they had this huge marketing campaign about the Chief versus Log. I need to do a video on Halo 5 sometimes. And you get the game and it's nothing, nothing about the Chief versus Log. It's about robots and Cortana. So what did we get instead? If they're going to take Atriox out and save him for the next game, they must have put something in to really, really justify this terribly dickheaded decision. But instead of justifying this decision, we got an annoying Atriox fanboy named Eshram, who would just never shut the fuck up about his deep, repressed love for Atriox. He'd be constantly popping up and saying, and saying Atriox, hear me. I mean, if they added some of the deleted scenes from the game, he'd be like, Atriox, hear me. I just successfully took a shit. He'd be like, Atriox, hear me. I just successfully completed doing the dishes. And let's not forget about the old classic, Atriox, hear me. I just fucking sent you a text message. The best part of finally killing Eshram is he finally shut the hell up. Atriox, hear me. I just got my fucking ass kicked. No, 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 no. I just killed you. Shut up. I mean, I'm making light of it, but that was sort of the whole problem at Halo Infinite storyline. Is the shit Eshram was saying was pointless. He'd pop up every time you completed the mission or just randomly end missions and start off by saying, Atriox, hear me, and then preach about some random garbage for five minutes that added nothing to the game. 
Unfortunately, that was juxtaposed with an incredibly boring open world. I think 343 really thought we'd be like, oh my god, we just like totally freed the marines. Oh, this can be so much fun. I can't wait to go do another fob. I haven't done that 15 fucking times already. When did so many video games start to mirror what it feels like to do fucking chores? Fucking checklist, chores, and battle passes. It feels like a lot of AAA games have turned into that. The combat was underwhelming, and the enemy AI had big problems when the game came out. The enemy AI seemed to struggle to understand how to fight you if you would just get far enough away. It kind of just stood there and let you shoot it. They did fix that later on with an update. So the only thing we had left to hope that Infinite would actually be good was the multiplayer. The multi Now, the multiplayer was actually fun, and I put an unreasonable amount of playtime into it, but at first the game severely limited progression in the battle pass. Now I brought this up briefly in my video last week about why live service games are dying, and on top of the limited progression through the battle pass, the game didn't ship at Forge, and it had big matchmaking problems when it came out, and 343 didn't address these problems for over a fucking month because they needed to go on vacation. It was also solely lacking in multiplayer maps, which is a problem if you want me to play the game for 9,000 hours. On top of that, if you were waiting for the first new season, hoping to get better content and that would save Infinite, the first new season of Infinite was a solo only season. Now Halo Infinite wasn't all bad. The linear missions were fun and they did a lot to fix Cortana. So the game had, had its moments. So Infinite is one of the greatest mares of all time, so Microsoft can't sit that on the table at the investor meeting and say, hey look, this is one of the reasons that the money we spent is worthy of it. Now, obviously 343 wasn't a studio that Microsoft bought, but the idea of buying studios was to improve your first party, and you can't use Infinite as an example of how you improved your first party. Then there's Deathloop and Redfall. Well, I'm not going to get too much into these games. Just say Deathloop is the most overrated piece of shit I've ever played. The game is boring as shit. I actually think the people at IGN who gave it a 10 out of 10 may have been high. And don't even get me started on Redfall. Redfall is one of the worst games ever made. It's a complete insult to anyone who played it. And it's absolutely feth from the people who dropped 70 or even more dollars on it. So it's another two games. You can't sit on the table in an investor meeting and say, hey, these two games were popular and they made money. But then there's Starfield. Oh my fucking God, Starfield. Now Starfield should have been the game Microsoft could sit on the table and say, hey, this one, this one right here is the reason that we spent all this money. But was it? But I'm going to touch briefly on it. I'm going to kind of do like a quick... Uh, overview review here of Starfield. Starfield has to be one of the, if not the, most disappointing game in my gaming life. So let's start with story. Bethesda is normally known for their story. It actually saves most of their games. So in Starfield you play a space dragonborn. Which is an insult to the dragonborn by the way because he's way more interesting character than who you play in Starfield. So in the game you have to go to planets to collect powers that feel like discarded dragon shouts from Skyrim, then you get the pleasure, and I mean pleasure, of being woman-splained about how you need to do some stupid fucking thing. Hell, I don't know. I wasn't listening. Then, after you weren't listening, you get to fight the biggest, baddest, meanest, nastiest enemy in Starfield. A truly intimidating enemy. Maybe the most intimidating enemy in gaming history. The loading screens. And boy, there are a lot of them. Even if you got an ultra-fast, ultra-fast SSD, it only helps so much because, because even though you only load in a few seconds, oftentimes there's somewhere like two to four loading screens between each area. So you got to load to go to orbit, then load to jump out of the system, then load to land on the planet, then oftentimes load to get to the person you're trying to talk to. Then there's no real aliens. I mean, there are alien like animals and there's some kind of big terramorph xenomorph wannabe thing that is maybe an alien race but it also seems a little bit bug like also the one of the initial premises of the game is a fucking lie can't be a space pilot because if you even try out of space Karen will stop bitching at you again she's like oh my god how dare you you gotta come talk to me you've ruined everything but me I'm playing wild wild west 
but not just Outer Space Karen, every member of that stupid main faction in the game. Oh, what's the name of that main faction? Hold on. You're part of Constellation now. Part of our family. How about new? But they all start bitching at you and complaining. So if you want to play the game as a space pirate, fuck you. And if you're trying to do anything fun that isn't just sticking to the uh, pre-approved constellation path, well, you're going to get bitched at again. Because that seems to be the major point of the main faction in this game, is to complain at you for not playing the game like an absolute square. So you can no longer play the game the way you want in Bethesda games, apparently. So you want to be an outer space womanizing space pilot. Well, you're a shitty person. Stop playing the game. That's what Outer Space Kalen says. Life is pain. Life is only pain. You want to be a Han Solo-esque hero. A rogue or a maverick. Too damn bad. There's no way to be that in this game. Remember when role-playing meant to play a role? You do, and you miss it. Well, too bad. You might hurt somebody else's feelings in your single-player game by the way you want to play. You want to play truly solo, fly around the galaxy, meeting people, meeting interesting people? Well, too bad. First of all, there's no interesting people in this game. But there are quite a lot of very boring characters and insufferably preachy characters that remind you of the very worst parts of Twitter. Okay, I have been made aware of the allegations. Is there anything you can say on your behalf? I'm trans? You just won HR. But there is a lot to discover. You get to land on planets, and you can scan alien bugs, and then mine some rocks. Scan alien bugs, mine some rocks. Scan alien bugs, mine some rocks. Loading screen. Rocks. Loading screen. Rocks. Glitch. Loading screen. Rocks. Glitch. Bad guys. We're all here because we're committed to the biggest question of all. What's out there? It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Bethesda did manage to accomplish something I didn't think could be accomplished. They managed to make space exploration look boring and depressing. On top of that, when you do find that enemy, the combat AI is laughably bad. Sometimes they'll take cover on the wrong side of the cover. They'll take cover on the side facing you and peek over the wrong direction. So you're looking straight at them. It is laughable. And also when the game came out, I don't know if they fixed this. If you used the slow down time power, it could break the enemy AI, which would just either stand there or get stuck in walls or run up walls or stand there and stare at each other because when you came out of the slow down time power, it broke the enemy AI. On top of all of that, you add in just enough intersectionalism to make it hard to ignore. Like a hardcore military commander who is okay with being cloned as a woman. Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Who's the slimy little communist shit twinkle toad cocksucker down here who just signed his own death warrant? So again, Microsoft can't drop Starfield on the table and be like, boom! Starfields are a vastly massive disappointment that almost everybody now agrees is an overrated pile of pig trash. But the point is, Microsoft's massive boondoggle of investing nearly 100 billion, not million, billion dollars into new game studios has so far yielded nothing. Well, I guess High Fly Rush was pretty good, but 100 billion dollars for High Fly Rush is, uh, a bit, a bit steep, I think. Uh, yeah, a bit steep. So Microsoft will have to convince the board members that buying up all these companies, all these game studios, wasn't a massive boondoggle. Otherwise, Microsoft's board of directors will likely be extremely unhappy to see that you spent $100 billion and have absolutely nothing to show for. $100 billion. <laughs> and this could put anyone at Microsoft in jeopardy, even the CEO, of losing their jobs. And my heart would totally bleed for their CEO and his $100 million Golden Parachute. 
So maybe someone on the board, or Microsoft, or Phil Spencer, or someone kind of job scared, will try to pitch the idea of no longer being exclusive and putting all of their games on PlayStation, especially if they can get Sony to adopt Game Pass, in the hope of offsetting some of the cost of the $100 billion boondoggle. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think Microsoft will put their games on PlayStation on a game-to-game -game basis. But I easily could imagine some of the board members not wanting to invest the time, effort, and money into making another game console when the Xboxes never seem to hit more than about 30 million sales in five years. And instead, they may say, hey, you know, why don't we just invest in becoming a, the biggest third-party publisher on the market? Microsoft also could try to force Sony to adopt Game Pass, especially if they don't have an Xbox anymore by announcing that all Xbox exclusive titles will come to Game Pass and Steam, and then very publicly offering Sony Game Pass as a PlayStation app to try to force public sentiment to force Sony to adopt Game Pass onto the PlayStation. And maybe more importantly for Microsoft, Sony TVs. I think Microsoft really thinks streaming is going to be this great future because streaming works so well for the movie industry that why not copy it? I'm kidding. Everyone in the streaming world in the movie industry has pretty much failed but Netflix. Then again, they might just be using those streaming sites to offset costs so they can pay less taxes. This would also come with an argument to stop making consoles and instead focus on PC. But meanwhile, Microsoft could be working to put Game Pass on all devices. Even if they start putting all the games on PlayStation, unless they do something to vastly improve the game quality of what they've released in recent years, it still won't help. So let's talk about the repercussions. Now, obviously, the repercussions of this, both positive and negative, most of them, I think, still occur whether Microsoft makes a next Xbox or not if they're actually putting their games on PlayStation. So let's start with the potential positives. Now, I want to point out these are all potential repercussions, and the positives are far less likely than the negatives. So if Microsoft pulls out of the console war, we might start to see PlayStation games on PC day and date. Now, we've already seen Sony kind of flirting with PC a little bit. There's a lot of money in the PC. It doesn't really hurt the console sales. It might happen whether Microsoft pulls out or not. But I think that if Microsoft pulls out, you'll probably see games coming to PC faster. And the reason for that is because Sony would have no reason to snub the biggest publishing partner they have, which Microsoft would become if they start ma stop making game consoles. We also most likely would never have to deal with timed exclusives again, because there's no point in timed exclusives, because Sony's not really competing with Nintendo. Nintendo's more of a competitor of Steam's with the Steam Deck, because Nintendo's consoles are more handheld devices. On the other positive, most this one's mostly for PlayStation fans, it would allow some of the greatest games of all time to come to PlayStation. Games like Halo Master Chief to be on PlayStation, a game that some PlayStation gamers may have never played. It could also let players be more free to play the way they want, like using an Xbox controller on PlayStation. You can already use any controller you want on a PC, but right now you can't use an Xbox controller on PlayStation. It likely would also vastly improve crossplay. Uh, no more Sony filling up barriers because they are afraid that somebody might play with an Xbox person. I actually don't know why Sony is so opposed to it, but no more Sony dragging their feet on crossplay because what's the point? Also, if Microsoft is focusing on being a publisher, a third party publisher, or making games instead of platforms, it might force Microsoft to improve their game quality. It might lead to Microsoft making better games, maybe. Maybe. Now this one is likely just wishful thinking because, because I don't know why it really would. But unfortunately, Microsoft's caught up in the same bullshit that is currently killing Hollywood. So I don't know that there's really anything that can improve Microsoft's game quality right now. Microsoft is completely bit by that addiction to the modern audience that we have seen through years in Hollywood. Did I ever tell you what the definition of insanity is? Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again oh, expecting shit. shit to change but does not exist that is crazy 
the first time somebody told me that, I don't know, I thought they were bullshitting me, so boom, I shot him. It can't be argued at this point that the idea that there's some mythical modern audience that doesn't want good entertainment is cannot be argued that it's an objective failure. As they used to say when I was a kid, money talks and bullshit walks. And it's clear how much money this idea is lost. And Microsoft is as caught up in it as any Hollywood studio. So I really don't know if Microsoft can even make good games anymore. Everyone's just walking around like a bunch of conformists. Go ahead and wear your business suit so you can make $34,000 a year and buy your condominium. They're all zombies racing to their grave. So now the bad, if Microsoft pulls out of the console or all just goes fully multi-platform. It means Sony will have no real competition in the console space. There's nothing good about Sony having no real competition in the console space. This means Sony would be free to do whatever they wanted. So you think they might raise the price of the PlayStation? If they have no fear that Microsoft will undercut them, Maybe they'll just start with $5.99 with the next PlayStation and give you a speech about how all the stuff in it makes it worth it, even though it probably won't. Or maybe they'll start with $6.99 and be like, well, yeah, it's a little expensive, but it's worth it. Then, a few, next time, maybe they'll push to $7.99, $8.99, or more. Maybe even $1,000 or $1,300. What? You watching this? Sony wouldn't do that? Sony's not that kind of company? Well, why not? This is a company that's already tried to push the prices of consoles to $599 and $650. And they did it in 2004. The only reason they stopped is because Microsoft undercut them and the 360 was kicking their ass. This is the same company that jumped in with both feet and fully embraced the move to $70 when Microsoft pushed back against it. And you don't think people will actually pay that much for a game console? Well, people pay... $1,300 for a cell phone and $1,700 for a graphic card, so so you really think they wouldn't pay $1,000 for a PS6? Especially if Microsoft doesn't just go multi-platform, but pulls out of the industry altogether, then it's the only option if you don't want to play on PC. And if you want it to go to PC, a $1,000 PlayStation would still be less than half what it costs for a top-end gaming computer, which can cost you somewhere between $2,500 and $4,000. The next potential negative side effect, like I said, these are all potential. The next negative thing that could happen is Sony does the opposite of putting more games on PC. And without competition, Sony returns to being purely exclusive and pulls everything off of PC. Because Sony will no longer feel the need to buy goodwill of gamers anymore because they won't need it. They could pull all future plans to put games on the PC. Thinking instead of focusing exclusively on the PlayStation 6, which would make the PS6 the only way to play their games, and the fact that the PS6 would have the Xbox games, would make the PS6 almost a necessary console for every gamer. And that would and the biggest problem with Microsoft leaving is it would give Sony complete power in the game industry. They could really do anything. They could really do anything because they won't have competition. And if you think Sony's got your best interest at heart, you're just lying to yourself. So, in summary, I actually think Microsoft leaving the console space would be absolutely cataclysmic for the console space. It would allow Sony unprecedented and unrestricted control in the console space. They would be able to do whatever they thought was best for business, change whatever they want, and release games in any state they want because you don't have another option. They wouldn't have any restrictions, they could do anything. Microsoft leaving the console space would likely cause long-term massive issues in the console space. Now, let me be clear. I don't think Microsoft is pulling out of the console war. Like I said, I wrote this before some of the rumors came out. Now it seems pretty obvious they're not. But I do think Microsoft is going to start putting some of their games on PlayStation. Just the bad ones. Unless Sony wants to allow Microsoft to put Game Pass on PlayStation without ending the console war. I don't think that'll happen either. Sony has been hesitant in the past to let Microsoft put any Xbox games on PlayStation. Most likely the only thing that will come out of this is games like Starfield, Diablo, and Call of Duty staying on PlayStation. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you think that Microsoft leaving the console space is a good thing and why. And if you think uh, Microsoft 
leaving the console space is the end of all things. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Come back next time. So I'm doing a video next. I hate forecasting videos because every time I do, I never do them. But my plan right now is to do a video on Florida State's potential for the upcoming year. The schedule prediction will be a little bit later, probably next month sometimes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Come back next time. And as always, this is a Damn Nerd signing out.